Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist, and welcome to this Adobe Illustrator tutorial where we will be learning five really neat and time saving workflow tips. From layers to gradients to masks, inversing shapes, and cleaning up paths. With these tips, you'll be equipped to speed up your work and ease your frustrations. So make sure you'll keep watching, because learning Illustrator is easier than you think. Before we start with this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell if you haven't already, so you'll never miss any of the Vector Twist tutorials. And with that said, let's get started. In Adobe Illustrator, no matter what you'll create with each path, shape or stroke, a new layer is automatically created, so getting kind of organized is key. I've created my 2019 speed art, and as you can see in the layers panel, I have tons and tons of layers. I've already organized them and gave them some name, but we can even group them more together. And there is a really easy way to do that. For example, you can see my pool base here with all the accessories and everything. And I want to create a layer that becomes the main layer for these pool objects. So here's a layer called accessories, pool shadows and pool base. And I would like to merge them all together basically make them sub layers to a main layer called pool. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the create new layer icon, then double click it and call it pool. After that, I'm going to highlight the layers I want to drag into my pool layer. So it's going to be the accessories, press and hold the shift key, click on the other layer, and then the last one called pool base. Then I'm simply going to click on it and drag it up. Once the layer is highlighted in a light blue, I let go. And now I've created sub layers to my main layer called pool. And now I can easily turn it off and then back on again. This way I can see really what I'm working on if I need to make any changes. And of course I can create new layers for any other objects that I can group even more together. And this way you can really stay organized with your artwork, especially if it gets quite complicated. Just in case you're interested, check out the link in the description to the 2019 speed art. So I have finished all my design and everything looks good and I'm happy with it, but I want to clip it to my artboard. Basically the black rectangle you see here is my artboard. And I would like to isolate just the numbers and parts of the pool and not show all of the design. Now I have all my layers and I could easily create a clipping mask. I'll quickly show you. I'll take the rectangle tool. I create a clipping mask. I'm on my top layer and then I select everything and then go to object, clipping mask and make. Now I have clipped everything, but you can see all of my layers have been destroyed. There's nothing left in my layers here and everything has been merged into one. And of course, this is not something you want to have. You've done so much work to keep everything organized. And I have a really great tip how you can keep all your layers and still apply a clipping mask. So let me undo and let me show you how you can create a clipping mask without destroying any of your grouped layers. We want to create a top layer and let's call it main, basically a layer on top of everything. Simply use again the create new layer icon and give it a name. After that, I'm going to select all of my layers below. An easy way to do this is with the cursor, just create a rectangle on all of the layers that you want to merge into the top layer. And then repeat the step, grab them, and once the layer is highlighted, let go. Now we have a main layer with tons of sub layers. Then we create again a new layer, and then we call it mask. Once we've created our layer called mask, we're going to add a rectangle the size of our artboard. So we have a clipping mask to choose from. Then we're going to select the main layer, click on the flyout menu of the layers panel and choose make clipping mask. Now everything has been clipped to the mask, but as you can see, all your layers are intact. I can still hide the pool if I want to. I can still hide other elements. Nothing has been destroyed, but we still clipped everything to the area that we wanted to clip it to. And if I wanted to, I could select all of them and move my artwork around just in case I don't like the position of my clipping mask. So I select everything and then I can move things around within my layer mask. This is really helpful if I want to show just part of my artwork to a potential client or save it just as a snapshot of what I'm working on. The next tip was sparked by a recent comment left by a viewer on my Freeform Gradient tutorial. And it's really a great tip and I want to share it with you. Gradients can be a bit frustrating when you want to apply colors to the gradient stops. 
but with the last big update to Adobe Illustrator CC, the Gradient tool received a well-deserved makeover, and you will find now the color picker in the Gradient panel and a new Gradient type called Freeform Gradient. As an example, I have a popsicle icon here on the artboard, and I would like to change the main shape into different colors, into a multicolored design, kind of resembling a cotton candy look with pastel colors. And the Freeform Gradient tool will really help here. And with the color guide open, I can easily choose my colors as well. So let me show you how it works. I'm going to select my main shape, and I'll make sure the color guide has activated the color, basically set the base color to the current colors. All we have to do is double click it. Then from the drop down, we can choose any color harmonies. I've chosen Triad. So once you've chosen your color harmonies, you can select in the gradient panel the freeform gradient type and apply it to the shape. It will randomly add some gradient stops with some random colors. Now all we have to do is highlight the stops and then pick from our color guide the colors we would like to add. So for the first one I'm going to apply a nice bluish pastel. I'm selecting my next gradient stop and I'm going to apply my yellow, another gradient stop. Maybe I'm going to pick a warmer or cooler color from my color guide. Let's pick a cooler color. And then the last stop, I'm going to go with a more muted orange. And this is how you can apply different colors via the gradient tool and the color guide to your artwork. And the best part about it is that if you're not sure what colors would work together, the color guide will give you all of the harmonies from complementary to monochromatic to triad and so on. And it is really easy with the Freeform Gradient tool to pick the color stops and color them. Thanks to all of you who take the time to leave comments. They're very much appreciated and as you can see are helpful to me and others. And if you like this little popsicle icon, I have a written tutorial over at VectorTwist.com. Just check it out. The link is in the description. Like me, you probably use the Pathfinder tool a lot and it happens that you cut out a shape and then needed that exact shape again. And instead of recreating it, there's a much easier and faster way. So let me show you. For example, let's take the speaker icon with the liquid inside and the small circles. The small circles have been cut out, but I need the exact same shapes of these circles and there's a really easy way to get them back. When you apply the Pathfinder tool, a compound path is created and we can access the shapes by double clicking the object. So first I'm going to create a copy of my liquid shapes with the circles. I'm double clicking. I'm inside the compound path. I see this up here. Now all I have to do is select the direct selection tool from the toolbar, select the shape and then delete it. What's left are the circles. I double click again anywhere and I exit the compound path shape. Now I have my circles. As you can see, these are the exact same circles and I can put them on top of my beaker to show that the bubbles are coming out of the liquid, out of the beaker. And since I deleted or basically cut out my original circles via the compound shapes, I got them back. And this is how you can inverse a shape that has been cut out by accident or purpose and then you needed it back. The last workflow tip in Adobe Illustrator is one that I use often. It's about cleaning up your paths. Illustrator can be notorious with adding tons of unnecessary points, especially when you expand an effect. In my example, I was working on my circular slide for my 2019 isometric speed art and I created my slide pieces with the 3D Revolve tool. Now if I select it and then go to Object and expand it, you see what can happen. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. I get all these extra points that I don't really need. So let me show you how you can clean up your path and really get them down to a minimum. The first step we want to do is open up the Pathfinder tool and click the Unite button. After that, we're going to simplify the path. We can find this under Object, Path, Simplify. Now in the pop-up window, we need to set the curve precision and the angle threshold. The first thing, we want to put the curve precision all the way to the top to 100%. And we're going to do the same thing with the angle threshold. We're going to push it up to 180 degrees. Select your preview and as you can see original points are 210 and current 205. But we can bring this much lower. All we have to do is bring down the angle threshold. 
I usually work with 176 degrees. This is really a sweet point. Sometimes you might have to go a bit, little bit lower or a little bit higher. You just have to see how it works with your object. But now you can see I went from my original 210 points down to 23 points. And this works really well when you want to create these shapes and have a lightweight illustrator file. So bringing down the points really helps with your workflow to speed things up and keep your work file small. And that's it. Give these five tips a try and you'll see that they can really speed up your workflow. Four of them I use on a regular basis and the fifth one was a really great comment left on the freeform tutorial. Thanks again for the comment. So please leave a comment below and let me know what you liked about this tutorial and didn't like and then support me by giving the tutorial a like, hit the subscribe button too and make sure to press this notification bell so you'll be notified when the next Vector Twist tutorial is live. I'll see you next time.